My name is Derek Newby, and I'm a TTA specialist for Region 6 of the Prevention Technology Transfer Center. The opinions expressed herein are the view of the PTTC network and do not reflect the official position of the Department of Health and Human Services or SAMHSA. There's a great new resource available from the PTTC regarding effective coalitions. It's called the Six Elements of Effective Coalition Resource Toolkit. We're going to discuss each of these elements in this series. If you will pause the video, you can download the document from the link provided below by entering the web address in your browser, then select resources and download this document. Now that you have the toolkit, you can follow along and use it as a resource. We facilitated an affinity group recently, and this is the first of a series to support those who attended as well as others as one strives to build coalitions and revitalize coalition efforts. During this brief video, we will focus on the importance of having diverse stakeholders and how to implement a plan to succeed in this effort. The resource toolkit is divided into sections covering each of the six elements of effective coalitions. We wanna share knowledge about the impact of community-led prevention efforts to help you jumpstart your strategy to support local-led prevention efforts. I've been a part of multiple coalitions and recruiting people has always been a challenge. Too often, we ended up with a few committed people and others that came and went until we started embracing some key elements. The six elements of effective coalitions can have a positive impact and strategies support community-led efforts. More diversity in coalition membership increases the likelihood that the coalition efforts will be successful. As a young college student many years ago, I brought new knowledge and fresh skills as a member. And as a seasoned preventionist now, I help increase the effectiveness of a coalition in achieving outcomes. I say that to say that no matter the age or experience of a stakeholder, everyone has something to bring to the table. So how do we build stronger coalitions with diverse stakeholders? In the toolkit roadmap, the diverse stakeholders checklist is the roadmap that many of you have been needing to show your coalitions the path. When you have a roadmap, it's much easier to reach your destination. Even for people who have worked in prevention for many years, a tool like this is extremely helpful. Reviewing the diversity in our communities and broadly recruiting members is an ongoing process. I can tell you, this may be a little uncomfortable because we tend to interact with the same people. But when I began working on a coalition, my world grew because I became connected with people from multiple sectors. I met members of law enforcement and I, I talked to other college students to find common goals. Use this checklist can help you. So let's go over the checklist together. To create an empowering environment and increase the program success, the coalition must provide opportunities for members to take on significant roles. Encouraging members to take on various formal coalition positions builds capacity and promotes retention. What are the current procedures related to leadership in your coalition? How is your coalition measuring success? Do the current roles of your coalition support and seek out members' views? Coalitions should take steps to make sure everyone is involved in the discussion. It could lead to modification to how the coalition meets or open up doors to people who may not have had access in the past. Something as simple as meeting on the weekend rather than on a weekday could bring people to the table that work Monday through Friday and did not have the opportunity to attend the meeting in the past. Think about it. I want you to write down the names of the people in your coalition and what stakeholder sectors they represent. If you're forming a coalition, write down the names of people you intend to recruit and what sector they represent. The sectors include business owners, parents, the media, law enforcement, schools, faith community, healthcare providers, social service agencies, and the government. I'll pause now. Just as you complete an important first step by examining the membership representation, you can identify gaps. Once you've identified the gaps, your coalition can work effectively to develop a comprehensive recruitment plan to fill those gaps. Remember, coalitions connect multiple sectors of the community. Having gaps means you may be missing pieces of the puzzle and may not have a full picture of your community and its needs. 
I want you to, to encourage your coalition to ask the question, who is missing and how can we get them to the table? Exploring each sector when recruiting coalition members will help bring attention to your efforts. You can even ask the people you recruit to recommend other people. Think about it. Aren't you more likely to accept an invitation from someone you know? I asked you to create a list because one needs to track their recruitment efforts. Even if some of the people you talk to are not available initially, things change and opportunities arise. This chart that you see will help you take your recruitment effort to the next level. It allows you to explain you know, what's in it for them by asking you to think about the value of being a part of the coalition to the prospective partner. People are complex. Coalitions and people within them must know their why. Your function should be to help your core team to mobilize and support them in the, the development of a plan to carry out a community-wide effort that is inclusive. Taking the time for your coalition members to learn about each other will help them understand their community. Cultural humility involves an ongoing process of self-exploration and self-critique combined with a willingness to learn from each other. It means entering a relationship with another person with the intention of honoring their beliefs, customs, and values. Some of my best experiences on coalitions have come from opportunities to share my truth and hear about the realities of other people living within my community. Community mapping is a great exercise to use when you wanna learn about your community because everyone can share their perspective about risk and protective factors that are present within the community. It is also a cooperative learning activity that encourages the understanding of diverse perspectives. Personally, I think it should be done annually, but to identify the strengths and weaknesses of the coalition. So learning about the specific populations in your community may be a major challenge because it requires you to bring people to the table that may not have historically been active in your coalition. We do prevention to make effective changes. People working together in a strong community with a shared goal make the impossible possible. So it's important to learn about each population in your community. Taking the time for your coalition members to learn about each other will help them understand their community. When you know someone else's why, it's easier to, to connect with them. In my community, the people may be having a problem with access to prescription drugs, but my fellow coalition member may live two miles away in a neighborhood that is flooded with liquor stores and access to alcohol for minors may be their concern. Because we are all in the same city, their concerns should be my concerns and vice versa. That requires us to have honest conversations. These conversations will help us emerge with a clear picture of our whole community and guide us in developing a comprehensive plan. So accept the fact that general members will be active at varying levels. Some may attend meetings, while others may only lend you their good name or their logo for your material. It would be good to identify a diverse group of people with a personal story, stories that will compel key decision makers to pay attention to your coalition's effort. Some of those stories will emerge as you follow this roadmap. So use this checklist. This checklist will help you unlock ideas, explore policies, identify gaps, develop a recruitment plan in a respectful environment that supports cultural humility. In essence, this roadmap can help you help your coalition. In our next video, we're going to discuss opportunities for participation, opportunities to create an empowering environment and increase to increase the program success. I challenge you to go back and ask your coalition to answer this question. What opportunities do we provide for active participation? Until then, if you have any questions or need additional tools in your recruitment efforts, contact me, Derek Newby, at your Region 6 PC. And remember, small acts multiplied by millions of people can transform the world. Howard Zinn.